Ah, good to see you all. Yeah, today I felt like um, talking about core issues and really focusing our minds on that. Often it feels like there's so much coming up in a week, in a month, in a year, and like it can sometimes, we can kind of lose track of where our mind's at. And so, so I find it um, helpful to look at, okay, what is my core issue? What do I want to really, really work on? What seems to be looping around in my mind? What is keeping me stuck? from my true identity. And so about a week and a half ago, I think, just thinking about this question, and it was with um, most of the community here in Mexico, we were all together. And I just said, I feel like um, my core issue, it's like I'm, I've almost been brought here um, to deal with my anger and I want it done, I want done with it. Um, and Jason asked me, how, how long do you think that would take then? And I said, it's gonna take a year and it's gonna be done. So that really gives me something to really like work on now and to really focus on when I'm going to bed, I'm thinking, okay, come through to me, Jesus, um, whatever needs to come up to be healed in my mind around all of this. I just want the job done. And in doing that, it's been really wonderful because it's like I'm seeing that it's not really about anger. It's about many different things. So one of the core things that, that, that have come from that is the anger just masks really how I feel. Um, fear. And as Jesus teaches, you're either in fear or you're in love. <clears throat> and I found this beautiful line actually the other day, and he said, um, all projection is anger. And it's like, wow. And I think I felt kind of alone in my anger. I feel like other people kind of deal with it in different ways. It comes out in many different ways. But yet there's Jesus teaching us, yeah, if you're projecting, you're, you're angry. You're angry at the world. You're angry for being here <laughs> in time and space. Who wouldn't be if you looked at it closely? And so it can seem like personal, like I've got a personal issue with anger, but really it's not even personal. I just like to kind of see it as like my mission as part of the sonship. And okay, this is what I've been given. This is the card I've been given. There's many different facets to this um, world and how we all are. And so this is my mission to heal this for the world. Um, and so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm sat here now. I'm sat here purely for the healing. So just in this very moment, it's like whatever needs to come up, whatever needs to be revealed to me, time is only for healing. And so that's why I sit here um, with you to share that. And so my invitation is today is to invite you into really look at what your core issue is. It might not be so obvious at the moment, but as we go through the, um, the show, it, something may start to arise for you. And it could be, it could be something very simple. It might be that you're in a job that isn't serving you any longer and you know that, but you're, you're not taking the next step and it feels so hard. And we need to look at what's underneath that, what you believe about yourself. We need to go in further because it's not about the job. As, as last um, month's um, online retreat was stepping into magnitude. And it's like that fear of being in that magnitude. What would happen if I got a new job? Well, so what? Just you get, you'll get another one. But somehow we have this fear of like this next step is gonna be, oh, it's gonna be so terrible. And then the fear, am, am, I, am I following the Holy Spirit? Well, if you don't try, you're not gonna know. And you'll find out pretty quickly whether it's feeling good inside. And then if it's not, you can move in another direction. 
And I guess in a way that's also why I'm sat up here today because it felt like a push to sit here on my own and talk to you. It's like, oh God, that feels like, I don't know whether I want to do that. It's like, okay, let's, let's do that. Let's step into this magnitude. Um, so yeah, there's been <laughs> a, a, a bit of fear coming up and nervousness around that. But yeah, again, it's not really about doing this. It's just about, I want to take all the limits off. I want to see all these little grains of sand that are in my mind that are stopping me from being who I am, turning over every stone. And so if I want that for myself, I want that for you. Why would we want to be trapped in hell? Like um, if you've been following along with the, with the lessons, the daily lessons um, and, the, and, the, and in the text, he said, um, guilt is hell. <laughs> and it's like, it's just, I just love these sayings. Guilt is hell. It's like, well, great. Well, okay, that's good. Because I don't want guilt then, because that's hell. That's not, that's not joy. So I need to look at where I feel guilty. So in a way, we can do this in a really fun way. You know, we don't have to sit here and be like, oh God, I'm dealing with my core issues. I'm in a relationship that I can't get out of. I'm angry all the time. Because then we just like guilt ourselves again and believing that we're a terrible person. And that's what the, the ego absolutely loves. It's favorite weapon. You're not enough. You're never gonna be good enough. You're never gonna get where you want to be. Um, there's never enough resources. It just can come up with absolutely everything to say you're not enough. And so really we're just taking off those limits together here. And that's, that's the only reason why, why I'm here is to look at where I do feel guilty and not to guilt myself again, but to really, really let go of it. And so what I've been finding with my, with my prayer, it was actually really, really wonderful. I'm so grateful I did this in front of all of the community. And I'm grateful that I have this opportunity now because it's like cementing it in place in my mind. It's like, yeah, I want this done. I am not the healer of this. And I'm gonna, the only thing I can do is try and find everything in my mind to hand to you so I can be done of this. That's, that's, that's just my part in it. And so it was like when I shared that with the community, just the power just coming through was just like cementing me into the ground. I could feel his power just pulling me down and being like, yes, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do this. I'm, I'm with you on this. And I was like, yes, I oh, just like felt it so strong inside. So I'm, I'm encouraging you to do the same. That, that core issue might be coming to your mind now. And we join deeply in that prayer together that we want this done. There's no room for movement any longer. It's, yep, I am going all the way with this, whatever it takes. And what I found is that, yeah, my anger's just been a, been, been a mask, really. Um, it's just all I've known. <laughs> so, okay, that's, that's good. So I can find something different to drop this mask. And I guess that's why I came into this path um, it was wonderful actually, because a friend from like about, God, when was that? <laughs> about 13 years ago, he messaged me out of the blue on Facebook. Um, and he's like, God, you've changed. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? So I just thought, wow, this is a really in interesting opportunity. I just thought I'm just gonna share like the snippets of, 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 my, of my heart with him. And what, um, and what happened. And yeah, obviously things, things can get pretty dark. Um, I was like, so when I was hanging around with him, I was like 23, so that wasn't a good time. <laughs> I thought it was fun, it wasn't. It was the mask, angry, drugs, fighting. It felt normal. Sometimes it felt good, but guilt was high. Really guilty. I didn't realise, I know, I know now how guilty I feel. <laughs> it, is, it is washing away. And there was, 
But underneath it all, there was that deep call for love and I just didn't know it. And in actual fact, this friend, he's, he's about 10 years older than me. So he was like really, really great to me and it was like really helpful. And obviously I was going out being wild and they all just enjoyed my stories of what, what happened this weekend in the Ken show. Um, <laughs> it's like wild, they're like, oh my God, what have you done now? <laughs> um, and so he messaged me out of the blue and so it was like this beautiful reflection, like, wow, like, what the hell has happened to you? Like, the last time I saw you, I can't even remember the last time we, we saw each other. And so I just shared some of my experiences. And one of the main ones that, that really, really changed me, I, I, I went and studied psychotherapy. It was, it was like a, a massive push. I thought I'd never be able to do anything like that. And I managed to go to London to actually study. And I found out that the model that I liked was Gestalt psychotherapy. And then I found out that there was a special center in London and I was like, right, I'm going, I'm doing it. And I done the form and I managed to get an interview and I'm like, oh my God. So that was like my, I was like, I can't believe it. I've got an interview. That was like enough. And it was very exper experiential. And it was really the first time where you really have to express, like you're going in there, there's going to be 12 people that are getting on that course and you've got to go in there and you've got to go and get it. And it's not really about your intellect, it's about do you want to do, you want to do this? So they set up all of these experiments for us to bring up whatever was there and my emotion was completely and utterly high and I was wanting to hide but I just went for it. And there were like tears and all sorts. I felt shame and like crying in front of this group. I didn't even know. And God knows what else. Come out completely and utterly shaky. I was like, wow, I've never done anything like that in my life. I was like, I think I was about 25, 20, yeah, about that, 27, something like that. And I've just come out of there and I thought, do you know what? I actually don't even care if I get in. Like I've just given absolutely everything to that and that was an amazing experience. So I was just extremely grateful. And then about, about a month later, this letter comes through the door and I'm like, oh my God. And I'm thinking, okay, they're just gonna let me know I didn't make it. And they're like, yep, you're in. And I'm like, whoa, this is amazing. And so a lot of it was about expressing. And um, we went down to Bournemouth with every year group, um, which is year one, year two, counselling, and then you have year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, psychotherapy. So it's 80 people in a group process, and it is pretty damn intense. It's like silence, and then someone speaks, and stuff is just coming up. And I absolutely loved it. I felt like I was clearing a lot. And it was after like the third year, I was in year three now, and I was like, oh, Every year I was like, I can't believe I've made it. This is, this is great. <laughs> I'm thinking they're gonna chuck me out in a minute. <laughs> but no, carried on. And there was it, I, I came away from the five day intensive and it was just like awesome. I just felt so good. And I got home and I went and walked around my favorite lakes. There's three lakes in a row, in, in a row. it's called Fox's Forest. And I was really wanting to practice being mindful because I recognized that when I meditated, I was much better with my clients than when I didn't. And so I started getting into this mindfulness stuff. Like, what's this mindfulness? And so I was walking around these lakes and every time my mind wandered off, I just know, come back to the present. And so I know the route really, really easily. So it's perfect. And then all of a sudden, as I'm walking along, it was like the whole universe just completely changed. Now, that's kind of happened to me on drugs, so there wasn't anything new, but this was stone cold sober. And it's like the whole world just completely and utterly changed. And I'm just like, whoa, what, what the hell's happening? And it was like the birds, I was watching the birds fly for the first time. They were just like flying in this like beautiful way. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And then literally when I said like, this is amazing, I just like snapped out of it. And I'm just like, what the hell just happened to me? Like the whole world's just changed. I'm not on drugs, I'm not drinking. And the whole thing's just changed. I'm like, wow, there's something much, much more deeper going on than, than I can imagine. Like I felt something deep in my heart. I felt this deeper connection. 
And so then there was like this prayer, like, wow, I want to I wanna know. I want to know what this is. And then three days, about a week later, I, you have to see a super, supervisor to help you with your clients and stuff and just learn from, really. And she lived in the middle of the countryside. It was about an hour drive. So I, dri I was driving out to her and I was a bit early. And so, because um, she works in her house, you have to wait outside. So I'm just waiting outside of her house. Just like, okay, just waiting for, got about five minutes. And I literally look up at the sky. It's just like a normal cloudy day in England, a bit gray. <laughs> so that's a good day <laughs> if you live in England. <laughs> and um, all of a sudden I'm just looking at the sky like, wow, that's really beautiful, like nothing major. And then it was like the whole of the sky just dropped into me. It just went, whoom, this power is like whack. And I was like, what the hell? And then it just went into me and then it just went whoosh, and it just went back to exactly the way it was. And I was just like, oh my God, what the, what the hell is happening to me? I wasn't really into anything spiritual. I thought it was all a load of old nonsense. I've got to be honest, I thought, what are they going on about? So I never really spoke about it, but I thought I really, really want to know what the hell is going on. And then people started saying, you're having spiritual experiences, you need to close down. This is like, it can be dangerous. Like, um, what did they say? Yeah, you can be too open and then energies can come in and affect you. And, and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want that. <laughs> so I probably started like closing down, like, oh, this isn't, this isn't so good. But what I did is I then started reading, reading spiritual books, Buddhism, Hinduism. And what I loved about it was, is they all came to the same point. Okay, ultimately we're all one. And ultimately what brings it all together is unconditional love. And I thought, well, that is one thing I haven't really experienced in my life. I, I actually didn't believe that there was love in this world. I thought it's a lot of old nonsense, really. It's just lust. Um, I hadn't experienced, of course, I've experienced what we call love in this world, but I knew that that wasn't, that wasn't it. So I put out a prayer, funny enough, like I've done on this one, I've just remembered that, of almost like one year. So I didn't even know. I said, right, listen, you, in one year, you, if this unconditional love is true, you've got to show it to me, whatever you are. I want to know if it's true. If I'm going to follow this, I need to know that's true because a lot of the paths are pointing to it. So if it's true, then I want, I, I, I want to experience it. And in actual fact, that was the first retreat that I came to of Living Miracles, it was a 14 day silent retreat in the middle of Finland. And actually David reminded me of it the other day and that's why I'm, why I'm sharing it with you because I wanna cement in place as well the reason why I'm doing this. Because it can be so difficult to remember that when we're going through so much darkness and believing that we're in the world but we have to remember the experiences that have brought us to this point together. And so there I am with my prayer and I was saying it a lot, saying, okay, there you go, whatever's there, bring it on, show me this unconditional love. And sure enough, yeah, I had the experience. <laughs> I thought I was done, I thought it was game over for me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm enlightened. <laughs> this power just comes surging through me which was immense, unbelievable, just like pouring from my heart. And it was like, you cannot help but give. It's like, I cannot give enough. Like it's, the power is unbelievable. It's beyond all of this. And it's just, ah, uh, just drawing you towards people. Like just anything, you just, you just wanna give this absolute love. You just forget about yourself. It's just hilarious. It's just a complete laugh that you think that you are what you are and that, uh, this truth of this love is absolute reality. And so this lasted pretty much for about three months. It wasn't as intense in the beginning as the very first like week was like power, immense power that was beyond anything I've ever experienced. It's not love in this world. And so for these next three months, I'm like sky high, but my ego's coming in with like arrogance. I'm like, oh, this is a, look how amazing I am. Oh my God, I'm healed. I'm the savior. Arrogance, pride, and the egos were getting right in there. And I could feel it, but I was like, they, it was just like whipping past me in a way because like the judgments were just like moving on. 
but of course I wasn't really letting go of it all. And then slowly crashed again, oh, I'm this terrible person with all these problems. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just good to, good to really remember that. It's like, yeah, that's why, that's, why I, that's why I'm doing this. This is why I'm sitting here talking to you. I want to experience unconditional love all of the time. That's what I want. If that's, if that's true, I've experienced it for three months. I've experienced different things that are beyond this world but I want that real consistent state of mind. And yeah, probably you're thinking about your experiences of like the reason why you're listening to me. We've, we've all had these experiences and so I want you to really remember that in your heart. Like, yeah, why am I doing this? Because we do need that strength to remember. And then the strength of God will then eventually take over because it feels like we have to do something and seemingly in that experience I didn't feel like I did anything. He just took me over. So all this kind of try and doing our lessons and everything, it's kind of really pointless. I mean, it's just going to happen ultimately. But it's like we feel like we've got to do something. So, OK, let's just do our forgiveness. And so we believe in these things, don't we? We believe in these problems. Oh, I'm a person who is angry. And really and truthfully, that's just a belief. Um, what did he say in the thing today? He said... That's right, he said in the lesson today. He said, the thing is with all your problems, you don't question the reality of them. <laughs> so you're trying to fix your problem where the problem is, but you haven't even questioned whether it's even real or not. You're like, yeah, I've got all these problems and we've all done it, haven't we? We've gone round to our friend's house, told them how terrible our life is, and our friends completely and utterly agreed with us and told us their story about how terrible their life is. And we go home and, OK, well, we're all in a terrible position. But really, we've never questioned the reality of what we're believing. So my idea, I'm an angry person. I mean, where is that even coming from? I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely hilarious. But of course, the belief's there. I mean, in the moment, I'm not believing in it. Um, but it's there. And so that's what I'm undoing. And so these beautiful things have come in. And what I'm seeing is, is that everything is coming underneath to support this. So I've joined the studio team. Now, if you knew me, I blew up more computers than um, I, I could work. When I first came to the community, I used to go on YouTube and I used to check my emails and that was it. And literally, that's the only thing I would do, but I could make a lot of problems with computers, believe you and me. All of a sudden, my computer would stop working, and I'd be like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> so I'd take it down the shop, and I'd go, well, listen, I don't know what I'll do. You know, what, what do you do on your computer then? Well, I watch YouTube and emails. OK, this should be simple. He lifts up the lid, and he goes, I have never seen this problem in my life. OK, give, give us a few days, and I'll fix it to you. OK, great, yeah, just go and fix it. Yep, so we had to strip the whole computer down. <laughs> We've had to basically rebuild the computer, but now it's up and running. Okay, brilliant. How the hell did that happen? So literally, I had this, so I'm just giving you the context as to how terrible I was. Now I do video editing here. I've done social media. I mean, I, I, the, the list goes on about many things I've done here. I just can't believe it. And then I felt this call to join the studio team. And I'm like, are you sure you really want to do this? But something was just saying, it's like the heart is just going, yeah, 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 you just, you just do this. I'm like, OK. And I expressed it to Laverne. She's like, well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see what comes in. Sure enough, it comes in. Hey, do you still feel inspired to be part of the studio team? And in that moment, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I really do. A couple of days after, oh, my God. What have I let myself in for? You know how terrible you are with this stuff. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you're right. OK, there's got to be something <laughs> in it for me. I'm just going to have to face this. I don't understand any of the language. I'm completely and utterly out of my comfort zone. They're like talking to me and I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> OK, but somehow we're, somehow we're, we're, we're getting there together. But you know what I've learned? What, what I learned is like, ah, this is part of my prayer. This is supporting me. So my, my, my realisation was, is that um, when we go live, like now, like there's, not, there's nothing we can do other than we've just got to be completely and utterly present and you've just got to absolutely do your best and join with your brothers. 
ask for help and the solution will come. We haven't got time to, to, to mess around. We've just got to be completely present and that's what I love. It's like, this is great, you've just got to be present. So there's no time for me to get angry, is there? I can't be, right, whose fault is it? Who's to blame here? Is it me, is it you? And getting into all of that, who's crashed the computer? Because we're live. So it's teaching me, like, I can't, I can't lose it. I can't be behind that desk over there and someone's filming and start getting angry with somebody. I have to be calm and it's like, we have to join together. It's like, okay. So these situations that would normally be like really stressful, so I'm in a situation where I don't even know what the equipment is, so that's enough to bring up, up my anxiety. I truly don't know what I'm doing, that's enough to bring up my anxiety. We're live, that's enough to bring up nervousness and anxiety, yeah? And we've got to fix the problem. Well, that's putting pressure on me. So that's like a boiling pot for me to be angry. Makes perfect sense, why wouldn't you get annoyed in that situation? It's, it, it can be stressful. But instead, I can't because we're live. And so it's like, I've just got to pray with everybody and just, okay, we just got to do what we've got to do. And I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. I can take this into my everyday life in every setting. <laughs> I can just remember that I'm live, that I don't have to react as I've been doing. Don't get me wrong, I'm still reacting. I'm not cured yet, still got a year, <laughs> remember? <laughs> so I don't I can't I can't react in this situation I can't I can't do my old things so it's just showing me aha so if I can't do it here I don't have to do it I don't have to respond in this way anymore oh my god how cool is that and I mean, to think about it, if you don't step out of your comfort zone, how, how on earth was I going to learn that? What situation really was going to put me into this? I, I don't know, of course there's, there's scenarios. But if I hide behind that crap job that I'm doing, if I stay in that relationship that isn't serving me anymore, if I don't want to look at my problems, then how on earth am I going to, how, how am I going to get out of this? How am I going to step into that magnitude? And so through doing this, it would look on paper, you'd think, well, he's probably the worst case, um, worst person in the community we want on, <laughs> on the studio team. He doesn't know anything about it. But yet the Holy Spirit's underneath it saying, yep, yep, this is for you. I've got a wonderful lesson for you. So you think about it. If that is the only lesson I got, and they said, yeah, you're right, you're absolutely terrible at this studio stuff. <laughs> can you, can you go, go, go along to, to go back to whatever you were doing? What a gift I've got. It, it's not about being in the studio, it's about the healing of your mind. Ah, oh, so that just feels like the gift that I wanted to bring today to myself um, and to you. Ah, <laughs> oh, so yeah, thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be with you as always, giving me this opportunity to share um, in this way and to encourage forgiveness, healing, happiness, and joy. So thank you very much.